Give me a five second countdown, Dan. Welcome to the Yuki D and Jinx show. I am Brian, and if you notice, Julie is not here because she's running around in Israel right now. So it's just gonna be me and our guest. And before we get to our wonderful guest today, a couple of announcements. We are broadcasting yet again on the first Tuesday of every month at the Palace Theater and Art Bar in, <clears throat> in the south of Seattle in the Georgetown area. So if you want a fun place to hang out, hang out with us first Tuesday every month. 8 o'clock, join us. Also, I want to thank one of our sponsors, that would be Mark Aronowitz. And Mark Aronowitz runs an outfit called Mark's Artist Signature Service and Other Elves and Goblins. Mark, brother, you're killing me with that name. We've got to shorten this somehow. <laughs> but what Mark does is something very interesting. Let's say you're a big Magic the Gathering fan. You've got some cards, you need signatures on them. Send them to Mark. He takes care of it for you. You want original artwork? Send it to Mark. You want sketches, alters, things like that? Mark is your guy. Mark is in touch with over 70. That's seven zero. Magic artist talks to him all the time. He's going to set you up. He's going to take care of you. So we want to thank Mark's artist signature, service, and other elves and goblins. So check that out. And who is our guest today? The amazing Yuji Okamoto. Yuji, welcome aboard. Oh, welcome aboard. It's great to be here. Uh, Wow, that was impressive. That was a lot of stuff that you said. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, I'm used to it by now. <laughs> so. What was the goblin thing? I, I uh, it's it's uh, um, other elves That's, and goblins. His signature mouthful. service. Yes, it is. Okay. I got it. I, Mark, we got to work on shortening that name, brother. So. Uji, um, why don't you tell the people about yourself here? Well, let's see. Um, born in Hollywood, California. Um, not the good part of Hollywood, of course. It's the east part of Hollywood. Um, and went to Hollywood High School. Um, God, moved up here uh, 2001. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, met my wife up here, actually. Yes, I, I came know up, that. Yeah, I came up here to do a uh, Miss Chinatown pageant. Mm -hmm. I emceed, and uh, that's how I, I met my wife. She was... Uh, Angie the, was the winner, wasn't she, or the runner-up? No, she was uh, the liaison. Oh, okay. She was on the committee. She had run, I think, the year before. Yeah, I know she was. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was uh, uh, one of the princesses. And then um, she was the one responsible for picking me up at the airport and then uh, dropping me off at, uh, at the hotel. And so she would show me around the, the, the city and all that stuff and, and make sure I, I showed up to the event. And yeah, that's one thing led to another, and and, uh, and now you have you happily married with three kids. Yes, three <laughs> girls, three beautiful daughters. That's wonderful. <laughs> now, Yuji, when you got started in show business, you actually got started in the theater, correct? Correct. I started in theater. Um, it, I started a small theater called East West Players, which is a, a Asian American theater back in 1979. Really? Yeah. And that and was in the Hollywood area. It was in the Hollywood area. It wasn't too far from where um, I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew the theater for many years. Um, I, I don't know. It's just something about the theater. Just, just it just drew me in. And really? I and I don't know because my my parents are you know. Japanese, you know, yes, yeah. get an education. I met your parents. Yes, <laughs> yes. Get an education, you know, and all uh -huh. that stuff. And and being the rebel that I was, uh, you know, I um, wanted to find something that was not being an accountant, oh, yeah. accountant, doctor, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. not, nothing wrong with that. But, yeah. Um, we yeah, need so. people like that. Exactly. <laughs> I need an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is an accountant. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's kind of how um, I, I kind of just fell into it mm -hmm. and uh, started taking classes there and I just loved it. And I told my, my parents, I said, you know what, I'm quitting uh, college. I, ha I was going to Cal State Fullerton. Oh, I can just see the look on your I dad's know. face yeah. right now. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Somebody bust <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, God, it sounded like Scooby-Doo right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah, he, uh, I, I told my parents, I said, you know what, I'm, 
I'm leaving Cal State Fullerton. I, I only had maybe a semester and a half. Oh, really? Something like that to go. So it's pretty quick you decided this is what I want yeah, to do. Yeah, so I, um, I, I left college and, and started uh, doing theater. And, and my, first, uh, my first play was, was uh, Tea House of the August Moon. And, really? And uh, um, I played the role that Marlon Brando played. Get out of here. Yeah, he played a Japanese servant. I, I know, Marlon Brando is a Japanese <laughs> yeah, servant. Yeah. I mean. But anyway, that was back in the day. And, and um, so when I did that, that piece, then it segued into another one and another one. And, and I really, really enjoyed it because you get that immediate kind of response. Oh, from yeah, because everyone's right there watching yeah, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was so cool. And you know, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. Mm -hmm. And um, I got my agent off of uh, doing theater. Oh, really? My first play, I played um, a Native American. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, um, it was such a, a great experience. And, and I didn't have much to do with it. And then I played a dying buffalo in that same piece. And so, um, you know, my, this, this agent saw me, and commercial agent. And, and, and then she, she said, I, I, I want you to come to my office. I'm going to sign you. Oh, wow. And so I said, sure. And then, and then she goes, you know what? There's another agent down the hall. She's a theatrical agent. She does film and television. I want you to go meet her. She's great and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget her. Her name was Margaret Dietrich. Okay. And she was sitting behind You're her desk. You're watching this, Margaret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was probably 70 at the time. Oh, wow. But, yeah, she um, never forget walked in the office and she's smoking a cigarette in her office. Hey, sit down. Of course, they used to do that back yeah, in the day. Yeah, and yeah. that's what she's had. Hey, sit down, have a seat. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so, you know, you want to be an actor? Yeah, 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 okay. Well, <clears throat> good luck. So, yeah, just sign these papers and, you know, we'll get started. So, it was, it was, it was classic. You know, oh wow! She, she wanted to sign. That's a TV right show there. right there. Yeah, <laughs> and and um, you know she's the one that got me into you know all these all these films and and whatnot. But um, yeah, it was um, it's kind of what I what I did. I did did the theater thing for a while, and mm -hmm. then I started working. And and the first gig I got was this film called The Check Is in the Mail. Uh huh. And so it was, it was a film, not a television show. It correct? was a film. Okay. Uh, called The Check Is in the Mail with Brian Dennehy and mm -hmm. Ann Archer. Oh. Okay. So some old time yeah. actors. And uh, I played this Hawaiian bellhop when they were visiting Hawaii, and I, you know, take their bags and all uh -huh. that stuff. And I'll never forget my my mom came to the set because she was so proud I got this job, right? And I had this um, honey wagon, you know, with the dressing rooms outside, mm -hmm. the big, yeah. big trucks and all that. And then she came and she started taking pictures of, you know, oh, my wow. dressing room from the outside. Uh -huh. So that's my son and I'm going, okay, mom, I think uh, it's time for you to go. <laughs> yeah. It's a little embarrassing here. <laughs> uh -huh. But, you know, it's so, it was so sweet and so cute. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, and then I did a soap opera after that called Young and the Restless. And, oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know you were on that show. Yeah, I did, um, I'll never forget. That was, it was such a crappy thing that uh, I was the last shot of the day, mm -hmm. last shot. And my scene was pretty long, and I'll never forget the, the crew guys. God bless them. This is what they did. Uh, as I'm doing my scene, I'm pouring my heart out, and they're going. Uh. So that was my experience with soap wow. operas. That was the last soap I did. Wow. I said, you know what? I don't How think many I episodes to... on that soap? It was the one episode. Oh, just one episode. Yeah. Okay. And my scene with was was with uh, Stephen Ford, who was the the president's son, Gerald oh, wow. Ford's son. Oh, get he out was of an here. actor. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. So it was it was with him, and um, but yeah, that was that was my first gig on television. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I started working more, and and my my first big f feature was a film called Aloha Summer. Mm. And which was great because we Do got. Do you remember what year that came out? God, that was. Uh, I remember the name. I don't think I ever saw it though. Came out right after Karate Kid. Okay. 1987. Okay. Because what had happened was this is 1984 mm -hmm. is when we shot it, mm -hmm. and um, 
the, the, the producer was, was a good guy, but he had no idea about producing, really. Mm -hmm. He was the writer, and then he said, I'm going to produce, I raise the money, and this and that. So, so he's wearing several different hats on exactly, this Exactly, okay. yeah. But, dude, man, we got a chance to go to Hawaii for, I think, the first three weeks. You know what all we did? What? We surfed. Oh, surfed so every single day. That's all we did because they wanted us to train. So we went out to Waikiki oh, okay. and we surfed and, and got to uh, uh, surf longboard. Mm -hmm. So it's a big sticks um, because this is a period piece. It's set in 1959. Oh, okay. And so um, we, we... So they got all the hairdos and the clothes. and Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was this kid from Japan coming to Hawaii, visiting his cousins in Hawaii and this and that. So... Got in a lot of trouble, and, and Shokosugi oh, was, he was my there? dad. Oh, he played my dad in this thing. Interesting. Yeah, and so because he he's famous for all those ninja movies yep. back in the in the eighties. Yep. 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 And I had a uh, a sword fight scene with him, which was pretty cool, you know, because here's Shokosugi. Okay, how many man. people on this planet have a sword fight with Shokosugi? <laughs> not very many, and live to tell the tale. <laughs> Yuji's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was it was awesome, but um, we got freaking paid to surf. We were in Hawaii for nine weeks. Um, the, the experience was great because the, the casting person uh, from Aloha Summer mm -hmm. turned out she was the casting person for Better Off Dead, which is yeah. the John Cusack yes. movie I did. Where, I saw that in the theater. Yeah, with the Howard Cosell and, yeah. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and then uh, she also cast um, uh, Karate Kid. Okay. So... Yeah. So when Karate Kid 2 was coming up, yeah. and that's your most famous role probably. Probably, to this day. yeah. To yeah. this day, I think I, I still get that. And, and um, you know, the, the lines, you know, uh, mm -hmm. hey, you keep for your collection. Uh, you of know. course. Yeah. People shout your lines out yeah. to you. You know what's interesting, though? That, <laughs> <laughs> that film has so many iconic lines in it. Because I, I, you know, when you look at Karate Kid, the first one, you know, wax on, wax off, yeah. paint fence, you know. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, man, there's so many awesome lines, you know, maybe trouble looking for you, you, yeah. you know, and all that stuff. Um, it, it, was, um, it was such a big film. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and the thing about it was I, when I got the gig... I was more excited about where we were shooting mm -hmm. because they said, oh, yeah, you got, you got the film. I said, oh, cool. He says, where's the shooting? He said, oh, it's shooting in Hawaii. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yes. yes. And Thank I was more, you. I was more excited about that. I didn't care about oh, really? Karate Kid. <laughs> I, karate Kid, I don't know. But, I want to go to Hawaii. Yeah, again. but you don't know how, how, how big it's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. You have no clue. And when, uh, when the film was being shot, I mean, it was everybody saying, dude, your life is going to be different because you can't just go out and this and that. Yeah. You're going to, you know, and, and, you know, Ralph and I, you know, we talk about stuff and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he, he said, yeah, that's, it's going to change. So sure enough, when Karate Kid came out, you know, it was, it was, oh, it was, it was a big, big deal. Yeah. You know, it, it made a hell of a lot more money than the first Karate Kid. Yes. Because um, the first Karate Kid movie was actually, it was so good. You know, it was, it was really a good movie. It was. Mm -hmm. It was. And I think that's what set up Karate Kid 2. Yeah. You know, it, it, it you know, made people interested mm -hmm. in seeing Karate Kid uh, 2 because of Karate Kid 1. Yeah. You know, and, um, yeah, it, it did change a lot. You yeah. know, and, and working with uh, Pat Morita, man, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, that dude, he can party. Really? Yeah. Now yeah. you work. Now not a lot of people know this. You worked with Pat Morita right before he passed away on that movie. Oh yeah, only the brave. Were, yes, only the brave, yeah, which I have a copy of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. he's such a hoot, man. He was one of the the most genuine people I've ever worked with. Really. And, and very helpful, you know, as far as being Asian American and mm -hmm. business and and trying to guide me and kind of being a mentor and you know telling me about the pitfalls of this and that mm -hmm. and, and stay the course and study hard and all that stuff you know but he he uh, um, while well, he was drinking a, a six pack but you know um, he he I tell was you it that, out on the set yeah <laughs> i think there was one scene i'll never forget he, he this ice breaking scene and um i don't know if you're familiar with that oh yeah break absolutely you know, the, i am 
so we, we had rehearsals in the morning, but um, he, he was partying, I guess, apparently either early in the morning or <laughs> late at night. Or up until the wee but hours. Man, he came in and he was still hammered. Oh, wow. And it was hilarious because um, he said, okay, so what are we doing? <sighs> and I go, oh my God, <laughs> whoa. And, and he, he, he just, just smelled the alcohol. Oh, just wow. kind of shot and probably burn my eyelashes and stuff but he he was um he was amazing because you know he would he, he, literally he'd be like okay but then when they said action he was on he was just it's like jackie gleason and i heard the story oh about yeah jackie gleason, jackie right? gleason did, oh yeah he that's a live show too he would come on stage ah, not, nah, you know do all yeah. that shtick and then he'd come, go off stage and he's like ah, and he's just hammered drunk yeah. And wow. then they said, okay, uh, Q, you're up. Oh, hey, yeah. And he'd go back out, and he'd wow. just be just on. And so that was, you know, my experience with Pat is, is um, you know, he, he had that ability, man, just turn it on, turn it off. And it's unbelievable. He, yeah, he was, he was just good. Yeah. He was so good. And, and um, you know, I remember when we were in Hawaii, him and my uncle, Danny Kamakona, mm -hmm. uh, th those two guys um, were like two peas in a pot. Oh, really? They would close down Waikiki, right? And I remember- Just one, for them, they closed yeah, down Waikiki. They, the, hey, the, oh, there they are, they're the, the, the only two left. But um, he, he said to me one night, he says, hey, you, you gotta come out, come with us, come hang oh. out with us. And I said- Yes, grasshopper. <sighs> okay, <laughs> okay, go. yeah, I'll yeah. come, I'll come. <laughs> So I knew I had to work. I had an early call the next morning, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's like 2 o'clock, right? And then I said, guys, I got a, I got a 6 a.m. call. Yeah. You know? and, and, I, and by the way, I think you guys do too. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. <laughs> no, I, I, oh, you know? And, and they would just drink 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock. And I said, Where, where's... <laughs> we got we to go We're, on. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they'd roll in and, and they'd just do their stuff. And, and wow. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Those two guys were just, just so much fun. And I, I miss both of them dearly. Man. Both those guys were just great. Yeah. You know? So I, I have fond memories of, of Karate Kid. And, and, uh, so the know. movie and the, and the making of it, you just have wonderful memories. Oh, yeah. Memories yeah, of it. yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's great. Yeah. To, to be able to, you know, film in Hawaii and, and work with those people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Ralph Macchio and Tamlin Tamita and Pat and Nobu and Danny and, you know, it was, it was a solid group. These guys are all like iconic people. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, Nobu McCarthy worked with Jerry Lewis for Christ's sake. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now, there's only so many things I can remember about Karate Kid 2 because I was head over heels for the love interest of, yeah, oh God. Yeah. And Tamlin, yeah. Oh yeah, she's. Tamlin is awesome, she's. She most certainly is. Yes, <laughs> she, but it's funny because she grew up in the valley, you know, in, oh, really? in, in LA, um, and, but she was just like a dude, man. She was the kind of gal you just hang out with and just shoot the oh, shit, really? be yourself, you can, you can rip farts and not even worry <laughs> about it, you know? But yes, yeah, she was. I didn't need to. That's, that's <laughs> too, too much. <laughs> hey, pull my finger. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she was, yeah, she was great. Um, yeah. Um, so, Poppy, can I have another one of these yummy adult beverages? Thank you. Yeah, and, and after, you know, Karate Kid, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, things, things did change, you know, mm -hmm. where I would get offers for all the bad guy roles in Hollywood. Which I didn't really want to do, right? Uh -huh. Everything was bad guy this, bad guy oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, got, you were kind of typecast for a while. In, in a way. And so I, I, I kind of passed on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then eventually uh, something came my way, which was called True Believer, which was a film starring James Woods mm -hmm. and Robert Downey Jr. Oh, really? Yeah. And I tell you, man, that was uh, one of my best experiences as an actor because the role itself mm -hmm. was just... Was really oh, thank you so much. I'll trade you. Thank okay. you. The role itself was great. It was well written. The the, the script was great. Um, and I'll never forget working with James Woods too. You know, I mean, he he was 
intense. That's another iconic guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Intense, man. Really? Um, yeah. We, we, uh, we shot in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is based off of a uh, um, true story. Oh, of, I didn't. Because uh, yeah. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's about a, a Korean American guy who gets locked up for uh, wrongly accused for a, a murder that he did not commit. Mm. And so um, it's, it's based on his life. And um, James Woods plays a, an attorney. The, this kid's attorney, his name is Tony Sarah, the actual character. Mm-hmm. And um, just, just being able to, to work with him, um, I'll never forget, he, there, was, there was a scene in this, because we shot in, um, what did we shoot in, Folsom? Oh, in, yeah. the, in the, the joint. Yeah, we shot in Folsom. And, um, and the funny thing was when you, I don't know if you ever uh, got a chance to go visit in, in any inmates or anything. No, like I've that. never done that. There is, there is actually a, a waiver that you have to sign, mm-hmm. which is a no hostage policy. So if you... What if, does that mean? <laughs> That's exactly, very intriguing. Exactly what it says. <laughs> yeah. If you get taken as a hostage... There's no exchange, uh, you know, so you're basically stuck on your own. So if there's a riot, stuff happens, and you're stuck behind bars, yeah, they take I th- you. I think I'm never going to go. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay home. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I'll, oh, and by the way, there was, um, there was an incident there when I was on the, the, I think it was like the third tier, mm-hmm. and I was, I'll never forget, I was walking to my, my cell to, to film this one scene. Mm-hmm. And uh, the assistant director, one of the assistant directors, she was, she was talking with one of the guards. And this, this guard was huge, man. He must mm-hmm. have been 6'3". Like a building with teeth. Oh, yeah. 6'3", okay. 240, yeah. you know, big dude, right? And so um, they were kind of block. She was kind of blocking my way so I, can, you know, I couldn't get through. Mm-hmm. So I put my hands on her and I moved her aside and said, excuse me. And I'm in character, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm walking to my cell, because I play a convict. I'm walking to my cell, the guy, the guard grabs me, spins me around, right? He gets in my face and he says, don't you ever fucking touch anybody in here again. And then, you know, I'm, I'm in character, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I just turned to him, I look up at him and I said, And I walk off, and he's he you, you know he's just seething he's with rage, just like <laughs> ready to pounce because you know yeah. apparently this is after the fact because I just went to my cell not thinking, then the the AD had to grab him by the arm and said whoa 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 whoa, he's one of the actors he's one of the actors oh. relax you know and he goes oh well he's lucky because I was about to cold cock that motherfucker oh yeah that's what he said wow so he looks just like this other inmate. That's, it's, it's oh, that other, was given yeah, grief. The other cell block. And I said, oh, yeah. So, no. so well, that's just validation for your acting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they <laughs> so, thought it was Someone wanted to yeah. kill you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because that, that's what people would say. Hey, what are you in for? What are you mm-hmm. in for? It's good, though. Yeah. Beating up a guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> but yeah, that was, um, and there was uh, a thing where uh, James Woods had a scene with Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know... Was Downey, this in the jail, too? This was at uh, the lawyer. He, he plays an attorney, mm-hmm. so he was at the office. And, oh, okay. and, and um, uh, Robert Downey plays his assistant. And this is when he's partying. You know? uh-huh. you know, he, he, he did bl- a little bit. Yeah, just a little. Just yeah. a little. <laughs> but God bless Robert. He is such a nice guy. And, you know, what a wonderful man but he had an issue Mm -hmm. so this one one day of shooting uh, freaking woods just was so frustrated because you know downey was kind of not giving him what he needed right Mm -hmm. and so he just stood up and he went over to him and he went boom and slapped him across the face i mean hard it wasn't just a you know Uh wake up yeah you know slapped him really hard glasses went flying and then he had a handprint on his face. So they had to shut down shooting because he couldn't cover this. It was just, yeah. So. Wow. Yes. See, this is all the inside information that yeah. everybody's going to want to so, know. So, yeah. So it was, it was great. Yeah, it was intense. But, mm-hmm. man, he, but I, I tell you, 
uh, he is, um, he said something to me, uh, uh, Woods. Woods did? Mm -hmm. He, um, because he works with, he worked with many huge actors, stars. Yeah. Um, he was in Casino, one of my favorite movies exactly. of all time. He worked yeah. with um, Robert De Niro mm -hmm. in Once Upon a Time. And yeah, two movies with yes. De Niro then, yeah. So, um, he, uh, I, Woods had, had, a, had scenes with, with uh, De Niro and De Niro says to him, he says, I'm only as good as you make me. So, which means, when, when actors do scenes together, mm -hmm. you'll have some actors that will say, you know what, it's, it's on him, I'll just be in my trailer. Have the script supervisor read the dialogue uh, off camera. You told me this before. Yeah, yeah, I don't need to be there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Woods was always there. Mm. He was always there, 100, you know, 100%, and, and he was engaged. He wasn't just, going through the motions uh -huh. because it's not on him. Mm -hmm. He would deliver a performance even though it was on me. Yeah. And that says a lot about an actor. Yeah. You know, because he's he a real pro. Yeah, he really cares. I had this um scene with him where there's a the plexiglass when on the phone talking mm -hmm. and stuff. And he, he the the director says, Hey, um, I need more smoke because I won't smoke wafting in front of him. Mm -hmm. So there was an actor next to me, and he was smoking a cig. So he would just blow the smoke towards my way. So I was just in the middle of this scene, and I thought, man, I'm really killing it. I'm killing it. And, and the smoke started wafting my way, and I started just hacking because I'm not a smoker, right? Uh -huh. Even though I had to smoke in the movie, it, it's just somebody else is smoking, and it's coming, at, and, and I started coughing. And I said, fine. I was so, I was so angry being frustrated. And then Woods just said, use that, use that. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling, right? And then he just took over. The director was like second secondary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get away. Yeah. Just, just go keep ahead. filming everybody. Go. Just <laughs> keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Stay in character. Let's do it. Go. And so I do the scene from the top. Boom, he goes, that's perfect. See, I got to watch that movie now. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It, was, it was amazing, you know, to, to be involved in, in, a, in a film yeah. uh, w with him. Downey, Kurtwood Smith, who I was a big fan of, uh, RoboCop. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Give the man a hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course classic. you do. Classic. Of course, how can you forget that? Yeah, and that wasn't mm -hmm. in the script, too. It yeah. was just, he just threw that. That's great. Now, also, you were, you were also in a movie with one of my favorite, I don't know, let's see, people, uh, comedians of all time. Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, my God. The brain you know, Okay, I, I need stories about Dice. <laughs> Because I'm a huge Dice fan. I was just joking. I was, I was going to say Andrew Dice Clay. It's a joke. No, but really, you were. You really like, yeah, I love uh, Andrew Dice Clay. I think he's just hilarious. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> so let's hear it, Eugene. I, I need the stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I had him do the nursery rhyme, the, you know, of course. <laughs> Which um, one? <laughs> <laughs> little Miss Muffins. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, he was... Uh, Bigger than life. I hear he's quite a character yeah. on and off. Bigger camera. than life um, could rub people the wrong way, mm -hmm. but I, I I enjoyed him. He was such a hoot. He's such a character, man. Um, doesn't give a rat's ass about nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, he just says whatever he wants. And you got a problem with it? Too bad. <laughs> Which. You know, I, which is so endearing to me. Of it's course. Like, fuck that, man. I, that, yeah. I like this guy. I like him. Yeah, yeah. I love him. So, Andrew. yeah, he was, uh, he was so much fun. And uh, I forgot what, I, I don't remember what, um, there was a scene where um, I, I did something where I imitated him. <laughs> And uh, unbelievable, pe pe yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> I think that was what oh, it was. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I'm a fucking believable, you know. And and I had all this prosthetic makeup, yeah, because you, yeah, he, mm -hmm. he smashes my yes, face, he and does, yeah. brain smasher, mm -hmm. he yeah. smashes my face. And I had all this stuff, and I said something, you know, and maybe it was the nursery rhyme or whatever. And the freaking crew just lost it because it was. It was funny. It was fun. It was, you know, and, and they didn't expect that at all for me to come back and to say something, something like that. Uh -huh. but, but yeah, 
Dice, Dice chuckled and, ah, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. It's a good one. Don't do it again. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was fun, man. That's great. And Terry Hatcher was in Oh, that. yeah. A, I, I saw everybody. that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Man, Terry Hatcher. Ooh, yeah. How mm-hmm. was she to work with? Yeah. I, yeah, Terry was great. And I got a chance to work with Terry on Lois and Clark. Oh, I didn't know you were on Lois yeah, and Clark. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and Dean Cain. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good people. Now, you did a very serious role one time, and you did a premiere at your restaurant. We'll get to that. And you played Ii Neomasa in oh, a yeah, historical yeah. role. Yeah. And you had to film that in Japan. Yeah. And yeah. you had to wear a suit of armor, and you know I'm a big <laughs> Japanese armor maniac, okay. right? Yeah. Do yeah. you want to talk about that? Sure, sure. Um, it was um, funny because when uh, I got the role, I, I heard that I have to do horseback riding. Mm-hmm. And that just... You know, just try. It was like full on gallop with a spear and all that, leading a charge. Mm-hmm. So I said, Oh, you know what? I better start practicing riding a horse. So I called my buddy up, and he had a ranch up uh, in Santa Clarita. And I said, Hey, can you help me? I need, I need a ride. I need to learn how to ride a horse again. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. And he says, Yes, yeah, come on up. So I rode a horse up there, and it was on this packed dirt. And you know, when you ride a horse, you have to kind of yeah, you have work, to kind of groove or yeah, yeah, work with the horse, mm-hmm. you know. And it had been a long time, and of course, that was a lot of practice. So I was getting my butt was like bam, bam on the saddle. I'm like, this is not going to end up good. So I got off, you know, and I f- finished my session, and I'm like walking like those old cowboys, and mm-hmm. I'm like this. I swear, my ass hurts so freaking bad. I bruised my cos cos. Yeah, you cosque. told me. And I, the, my tailbone was killing me. And so I had to ride on a freaking airplane to Japan with this bruised tailbone. And, and it's, like, only, it's only 11 hours yeah, sitting yeah. in that chair. Yeah. And, you know, and then you got to stop over, and uh-huh. then you get to another plane to yeah. get to... Mm-hmm. Then you yeah. got to go to Narita. And then the, take yeah, the bullet. To, yeah, 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 all yeah. that stuff. So, you know, I was shifting like this. I was literally like this on the plane. And then I had shifted the other side. And, and I'm thinking... How the fuck am I going to get on a horse in Japan? And in a suit of armor. Yeah. All that weight, right? Yeah. So I, get, I start doing this stuff, and I'm riding the horse, and I'm doing that stuff, and I'm like, freaking, I'm done. I'll suck it up, but, you know, because you can't, you, you can't be a, a wuss. One of those Japanese-American actors come to Japan, and such a wuss. Oh, yeah. You know? Those so, American Japanese. Right, right. Bunch so, of pussies. Okay, so this is what, what <laughs> happens. So I'm in this freaking suit of armor, and the day is freaking humid and hot that day. Oh, yeah. You imagine helmet, armor, everything, and I'm just just sweating, right? And then all of a sudden, I, I start to feel ill. And I'm doing this scene, right? And I finish the scene, and I go, oh, excuse me. And I kind of walk away, and I find these bushes off to the side. And I go, and I start hurling, right? And I'm puking, puking, puking. And, and then, meanwhile, these Japanese people and, and everybody's just watching me hurl into these bushes. And I come back and I'm okay, let's do this. So I, I do the scene and everybody's, whoa, 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 are you okay? Are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Let's, let's finish, finish, you know? So we finish the next scene. And I go, chut, oh, chut, and I go back over those bushes, and I start hurling again. So you have your own private yes. puking spot. <laughs> okay, all right. And I think, oh my God, is he hungover? Or is he? The... And and it turned out that I had heat heat exhaustion, yes. heat stroke, because I had just you know been in this armor and all this stuff. So they said, no, no, you got to go. You got to take your armor off. And I, and I looked at him. I said. You think a samurai in Japan would say, oh, I'm too hot. I must take off my armor. It's too hot. I said, you're going to have to kill me to take this armor off. And they go, oh, my God, this guy's <laughs> Kichigai, crazy. <laughs> yeah, right? too much in it. Is, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I sat there, and they put these towels on me, and they said, okay, just take the helmet off. Leave the armor on, but please, helmet off. And I said, Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. So I took the helmet off, they put towels on my head, and then, you know, they said, man, you were just dying. You were just hot and everything. So I kept the armor on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
real so man. Was, yeah, but it was it was fun, man. Uh, they, every time you go into because we shot at Toei Studio. Yeah. Yeah. To Toei Studio is like legendary. Mm -hmm. man. That is the place where all the samurai movies. All of them. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. That's amazing. And then, you know when when you're from you know the states, you go over to Japan. There's there's traditions, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you when you go in, in, in into a U.S. studio, you say, "Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, see you later. Okay, later." But in Japan, it's very respectful. You, you have to, you know, bow, mm -hmm. and then "Ohayou gozaimasu, Ohayou gozaimasu, Everybody. Oh yeah. You know, and then you leave at the end of the day. You have to say, "Otsukara sama this," right? Oh, so yeah. you have to say that mm -hmm. as a sign of respect. But I think it was. It was so cool because they have this system, you know, it, it, and it's just very, it's about respect, mm -hmm. right? Here, there's <laughs> sometimes- you There's get, no you respect? Get, yeah, 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 no respect. I get no respect. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I didn't mean to- <laughs> Ruffle the microphone. Just, sounds just like, oh my God, why did you do that? <laughs> the sound uh, guy's giving us an <laughs> evil eye. <laughs> sorry, <yeah. laughs> sorry, John. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he, he, <laughs> Here, there's regulations too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in Japan, there's no real regulations. We did this scene inside of a wooden soundstage, but they had these big bonfires going on inside. Oh my gosh! It was crazy. I mean, they were high, up up high in a huge bonfire, and you see the embers going up to the the rafters, and it was wood, wood rafters, and I'm thinking. That can't be safe. Is, 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 that, is that safe? You know? And everybody's like, oh, ah, safe, safe, cigarettes. safe, no worries. Oh, it's a must end. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, so you're getting the smoke, you're getting the cigarettes. And it was, it, it, wow. was, it was such That's an experience. An experience. Yeah. It was such an experience. But, you know, I, I am so glad I, I got a chance to do that. And, and and lead this massive charge on this. Yeah, I watched thing. it. I thought it was wonderful. Oh my god, fantastic! Yeah, and, and and leading that charge, all I kept thinking is, I had these big ass horns mm -hmm. coming out of my helmet. I could only imagine myself right. And then it's, ah, leading this charge on this horse, and then the horse hits a divot, and I go flying <laughs> off the horse and get stuck right into the <laughs> <ground>. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And like, ah, like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, was, it, it was a little paranoia. Of course. But I said, you know what? You, you cannot hesitate. You cannot think about those things. You just mm -hmm. got to go balls to the wall yeah. and go for it. Because once you start thinking about it, that's when you get bucked off. That's when you get hurt. So you just got to go for it. Yeah. But it that's was fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was amazing be able to be in Kyoto shooting there. Yeah, because it was a joint American and Japanese. BBC. BBC, okay. BBC. Uh, yes. not, yeah, Amer not American, British. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was awesome. Man. Yeah, that's fantastic. Was, yeah. Dan, how are we doing for time? Oh, you're good, we've got like 20 minutes. Ah, oh, that's great. We got more stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta talk about all the, the Kona Kitchen. And yes, we have to mention the Kona Kitchen. <laughs> and, and also, the... not very, a few people know, we worked on a movie together. Yes. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, well, it was. It was it's uh, a mini. It's a. It's a it's small short, film. short. Short film. Short film. It's a porno. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit that part? Out? <laughs> nice okay. pick. Nice pickup, Eugene. You busted me on that. One. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it was. Uh, okay. So we we. Rich is here. Rich is over there. Yeah, and, Rich worked on it. He's, yeah, he's, he's, mm -hmm. my, he's my guy. Uh, we always do these, these short films, and you know, we just sit around and go, hey, what should we do? Ah, let's shoot a short film. So uh, we shot this thing called Black Thread. And um, I'll never forget, I, I, I think I approached you. I said, hey, Brian. Yeah, you call me on the phone and goes, what are you doing? Can you come over? I want to talk to you. And I thought, well, I forgot to pay a bill. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and uh, because you spoke Japanese. A little, yeah. just enough to get by. Yeah, which yeah. is fine, mm -hmm. because that's kind of what I wanted. Um, and uh, uh, it was about this retired hitman and comes back and, and to avenge his, the murder of his, his uh, daughter, mm -hmm. you know. He, he wants out, but they keep pulling me back in. 
So, um, yeah, that's kind of... Uh, I played a real scumbag. Yeah, and then they send, yeah. uh, send you to mm -hmm. come and take me out. Mm -hmm. And, and um, yeah, it, it, was, it was quite, quite, quite a joy. <laughs> quite memorable. Yes. Uh -huh. and, I get to tor and I got to torture you. You got to torture me, which is you, fun. And it hit you with a sledgehammer. And hit me with a sledgehammer. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. These are spoilers, um, too, but, but you yeah. do have to, you do have to <laughs> see this. So, yeah, it was, yeah. Um, it was one of those things where, you know, I, I just thought, hey, let's just let's go out and shoot this, this short film. And, and so I, I directed it, and then mm -hmm. um, Rich helped me um, shoot it, and, mm -hmm. and he acted so it, in it. So did Bao did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bao mm -hmm. uh, came out. And, and we're going to get helped, to the yeah, project he film. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, so uh, it's, it's on YouTube right now, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, so if you, look at, if you go on YouTube and look up a Black Thread with Yuji Okamoto, you can see the short film that uh, Yuji did and see what a scumbag I play and watch Yuji kill me. <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. He seems like such a nice guy. I seem like such a nice <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, I become bad in the movie. <laughs> and speaking about, now, Yuji, you just worked on a movie here in Seattle. So why yeah. don't you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, That's a, that was a pretty big deal. Yeah, the, the movie is called um, The Paper Tigers, and it's a, it's a kung fu comedy. Um, it's about these uh, kung fu brothers who have a falling out in their youth, and uh, they eventually have to come together after they find out that their um, master has been uh, mysteriously murdered. Mm. Uh, they they kind of suspect foul play, um, and now they they uh, have to go out and uh, find out who was responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they they uh, this so is this is an action comedy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but unfortunately, these guys are um, you know much older. They're in their forties and older. And uh, <laughs> yeah. you know they're they're one kick away from pulling a hammy uh -huh. and <laughs> yeah. uh, picking up their kids from school. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, they have to do these uh, death matches. Uh, they call Baymo. They have to fight uh, to to kind of get information from these these uh, uh, kung fu uh, masters, mm -hmm. and fighters, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of um, what this uh, movie is about. Um, Bao Tran, who is a uh, local film director who I work with mm -hmm. uh, on, on multiple films, uh, his and mine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Bao's a really cool guy. Yeah, by the he's way. he's great. He's mm -hmm. he's uh, um, a local director. Mm -hmm. um, very talented. Yeah, very talented. So um, this this whole thing started uh, for him uh, probably eight years ago. Yeah, so he had filmed some stuff previously in Asia, too, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he um, uh, had edited a big film in Asia, yes. in, in Vietnam, and then, mm -hmm. uh, then he had worked with another uh, film, filmmaker in Vietnam, and, and I think that was, one of them was up for um, Academy for Vietnam or something like mm. that, it was, it was submitted. Um, so, uh, anyway. This this story was was eight years in the making, and he brought me in in probably the the fourth year, mm -hmm. um, and he he said, hey, I want you to help me produce. So um, along with these other uh, producers, was, I think there's four of us. Mm -hmm. um, we went out, hit the pavement, man. Yeah. And uh, you know when you do an indie film, and you're trying to raise you know, money for an indie, it is so freaking hard. And during our, our, our you yeah, know. Yeah, you told me you were basically doing backflips for people just oh, to yeah, try to yeah. raise a couple did whatever, of, videos, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, marketing stuff, just yeah. trying to get the, the project out there so people are aware of it. Um, we, we did so much uh, work to try and raise the funds to get this film done. Um, it was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and we actually during during um, this this journey, we we um, 
pitched it to these, 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 uh, this one studio. And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you four million for it. Four million? Seriously? Are you, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> Did I hear you correctly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they said, yeah, four million dollars. And I said, well, what's, what's the catch, right? And granted, this is a minority project. It's a kung fu movie about Asian Americans mm -hmm. and you know minorities. And and he said, um, just change the characters to white guys, and then you know we'll, we'll fund your film. And we're like, seriously? <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, it's, hold on it's, a second. Yeah. It's, it's. Did you read the script? Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't work if you. No, but of course not. you know, and then the the worst part was. You know who this guy was? He was he was an Asian guy. What? <laughs> Traitor. Asian American, and that's what he said. Oh. And wow. so we're thinking, oh my God, we can't we can't win. No, can't no, win for losing. Yeah. So we we stuck to our guns mm -hmm. and we um, good for we you. Raised the money. We went on Kickstarter and no, we, we we our ask was a hundred thousand. And uh, we surpassed that by twenty-five thousand. Wonderful. Yeah, and it was it was just amazing the the kind of response because you know when you do Kickstarter, the the initial uh, uh, probably first week, I mean that thing is like, woo man, that mm -hmm. thing is really going and good. And it just and it just yeah. it kind of plateaus. Uh -huh. And then we're going, oh god, what are we gonna do? You know, we're still. I think at that point we're probably maybe halfway or 40, yeah. you know, and we needed to get to 100. So I think, oh God, we have a week left. So we did this little event at the restaurant and um, the thing started, we, we, we kept checking. It's like, oh my God, it's going up, it's going up. And, and it just shot up. And that night that we did this event uh, fundraiser at, at Kona Kitchen, we got our money. And then we still had five days, and that's when we achieved 125 Yes, case. I talked to you right after you got the money. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah. To, that was such a big win for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up uh, getting our, our you know, million to, to be able to shoot the film. Um, and we, we shot all around Seattle and... Um, Including at your restaurant. And we're going to talk about yes. that in a while. Yeah. And we, we, we did it, man. It was, it was such a struggle. To, to you know asking favors and mm -hmm. you know trying to get food uh, you know for you know donated and all that mm -hmm. stuff because you know when you think about it a million dollars is does not go very far especially when you're doing yeah. trying to do an action film mm -hmm. you know and in, in multiple locations it, it was you know it was really difficult um, yeah. but we we managed to get the film done and now we're in the editing process and now we're gonna Great. do the post process mm -hmm. and so hopefully um, we're, we're um, so do you have a, uh, a, a date where you're hoping it's gonna come out we're hoping sometime next year okay. early um, we uh, submitted to Sundance mm -hmm. uh, so, so we'll, springtime next year yeah thinking? probably okay. around there it's funny because uh, while we were shooting um, one of our lead actors uh, got on to one of the Marvel series, Hellstrom, mm. and so that's that was a big deal because for us it just helps oh, with yeah. promotion, yeah. you know. And then one of our other actors, uh, Ron Yuan, he's he was in Black Thread also. Uh, Ron um, is in which part did he play? He played uh, the bald guy, the one that. Call, he's the, he was your boss. Oh, he's the one right. that called your head. He's Ozeki. Yeah, Ozeki. Right, Ozeki. Okay. So and he he's in Mulan, the live action oh, Mulan, okay. which Great. is coming Good out in the spring. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, I think that's what we're probably going to tr try and target. Cool is possibly in the spring sometime. Right on. Hey, Poppy, can I have one more adult beverage here? Thank you. Now, Yuji, you had mentioned the restaurant. Yes. And not a lot, maybe some people do, maybe some people don't. You are a restaurant owner. Yes. Um, you want to talk about that? Yeah, you know, uh, when I first uh, moved up to Seattle, um, you know, I, I, I kind of left, left Hollywood to come up here to be my, be my wife, mm -hmm. raise a family up here mm -hmm. because, you know, I just didn't see myself raising a family in L.A. or yeah. anything like that. So moved up here and, 
And I thought, what the hell am I going to do up here? There's not much films up here. So yeah. I thought, oh, I'll start a restaurant, right? And not thinking anything about yeah. this, right? Just, just Thank you. the romanticism, right? You think, of course. restaurant, oh, that sounds oh, cool, that sounds right? wonderful. Not knowing what the fucking, the, the amount of work, right? I had no idea, right? So my, my mother-in-law, Angie's mom. Oh, yeah, I, you, I love your mother-in-law. She, yeah, she's great. Oh, she has wonderful experience human being. In, in the restaurant business. She owned mm -hmm. a Chinese-American restaurant for many years. Mm -hmm. So she knew the, knew the ins and outs. And then my wife was a, was a CPA, Certified Public Accountant, yeah. you know, for one of the big, you know, uh, uh, companies. And, and then there was me. Uh, who had no idea about anything except acting. And, and so uh, when they said, uh, okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna find a space first. So we drove around, fucking drove, drove for, for a, so, uh, six months at least, trying to find a place. And we got so burnt out, you know, and, and our uh, youngest, I mean, oldest daughter, who was probably six months or five months at the time, Mari was in the back seat, you know, in her car seat, and she's, you know, we're schlepping her everywhere. We pull up to this one spot, and I said, you know what? We've been looking for how long now? This, this spot, th I don't care. This is the last spot we're going to look at, and this is the spot we're going to take. This is it. I'm not going to look anymore. And it was a Tyrolean restaurant yeah. at the time. It yeah. was a German-Hungarian restaurant, yes. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So we, I go in there, and I said, oh, my God, this is the place. And so I, my wife looked at it, and we said, this is it. So that's where Kona Kitchen, the original Kona Kitchen in yeah. Seattle, was, was, that's mm -hmm. how it started. And you know, we, we, um, we, we started divvying up, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, right? So my, my mother-in-law was kind of the front person, and she was a bartender, too. Mm -hmm. So she would do the bar, and then she would. Greatest um, Mai Tais on the planet, too. Great, like, yeah. yeah. Really? Heavy handed, <laughs> but yeah. you know, so she she would do the front and then do the bar, and then my wife she would she would do the accounting, and then she knew how to be a server and do the, do mm -hmm. the bar too, and then and they look at me, so what are you gonna do? And I said, I, I guess the kitchen, and they go, okay, you're in the kitchen, so I'm like. I've never worked in a freaking kitchen, the, <laughs> right? I had no idea. I worked in a restaurant in, in L.A. for when about a kids. week, right? A Japanese restaurant for about a week, mm. answering phones, t hosting, uh -huh. seating people. So that's, that's my experience, right? Mm -hmm. But now I have to shop for the restaurant. I have to yeah. cook, come up with the menu, recipes, mm -hmm. all that, Bartending, whole nine yards. Yep. It was insane. So I did all that, busted my ass, you know. And, and that's when I met you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we we somehow managed to be around for now 17 years. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a long haul, but mm -hmm. you know, it's it's been so wonderful because we got a chance to meet people like you. I met Rich Here's at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was just uh -huh. it, you know, just just a goodwill. All the friends that we made from from Kona Kitchen. Oh, it's wonderful. It was incredible. Yeah, by yeah. the way, the happiest place on earth is not Disneyland. <laughs> it is the Kona Kitchen. That's the happiest place. 85th and 5th. 85th and 5th. 5th Avenue Northeast. Yes. And we North have a Seattle. new uh, restaurant up yes. in Linwood also, mm -hmm. which we opened in January of this year. And it's doing very well, I yeah, hear, too. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I drove past it last night. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. It was um, quite the undertaking because, you know, the, the first restaurant was pretty much a turnkey operation, yeah. right? You just walk in, everything's ready, you just they open. Got seats and stuff, yeah. yeah the bar yeah. back there. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you don't have to rebuild, you don't have to yeah. do anything. Well, this other one, we had to gut the whole joint and then start from scratch. Yeah. Well, we didn't know about all the permit hell. I know, I know. You know, I, it yeah. was just... I heard that from you, Angie, and your mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I gotta, so your ears were I gotta, bleeding. Yeah. Until my ears were bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, just can I have another beer? <laughs> oh man, yeah. But it was. Um, but it's a wonderful place. Yeah, it's, it's really, it, really nice. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and like I said, the 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 outpouring of support, you know, uh, has been has been really great. You know, uh, 
for, for months and months, people would circle. It's like, you know, the hawks were just circling, <laughs> yeah. circling, circling, you know, waiting for us to open. Yeah. And, and finally we, we did. And, and, and I heard opening day was oh, God. crazy. It was crazy. That first week. There's a line we, around the block. We, yeah, the first week we ran out of food. Yeah. Yeah, one day we just said, okay, That's, we got to close our doors. We ran out of food. Mm -hmm. So Five minutes? Okay. Yeah, it was, it was a good problem to have. Great. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those good problems. Yeah, exactly. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, Eugene, we got five minutes left. What do you want to leave us with? See, now he stops talking. What do I want to leave you with? <laughs> no, 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 you want to say anything. Do you know, do you know what the difference between a uh, genealogist and a gynecologist is? No. A genealogist looks up your family tree. A gynecologist looks up your family bush. <laughs> Are you going to have to edit that one? No, no we're going to leave it. You're going to have to cut it. that one? Huh? Is that a good one? Is that okay? <laughs> Is that PC? <laughs> you got another one? <laughs> Unbelievable, <laughs> huh, baby? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. Two peanuts are walking down the street. One was assaulted. Hey! The <laughs> booze. <laughs> oh, man. Project in the future. Project in the future. Now, oh, my God. Okay. I, I, okay. Because so I was going to bring something up, but uh, you yes. go first. I can't tell you what it is because if I did, I'd have to kill you. Okay. It's a project I did. This uh, is actually yeah. pretty sharp. You yeah. could grab it and stab me with it. It's a like John Wick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pencil. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a project I did. I can't say what it is. It's top secret. Okay. Um, and then uh, I, I, I actually have to finish it. I'm going back in uh, December. Um, also, uh, I, I did a project, and this is crazy. I did a project called Driven, and it's okay. available now. Uh, it's Jason Sudeikis, mm -hmm. uh, Lee Pace, Corey Stoll. Um, it's, it's a really interesting film. It's about John DeLorean and his life. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's a big car maker. Yeah. Uh, did the Back to the Future car. Mm -hmm. And it's his, it's his story. We shot, this is crazy, we shot in Puerto Rico. And uh, you know, Puerto Rico is great, but it's a hurricane. Oh, was it right before, right after? Yeah, it was during. Of course it was. Right, right. So th they started shooting there, and then the first, was it Hugo? That I came, can't remember the name. Came, came, yeah. came through there, and they all had to evacuate. Yeah, it was a horror right? show. Yeah, so the Hugo just, kind of nipped it a little. So they said, all clear. So then everybody that went to New York, Florida, they all flew all the um, cast and mm -hmm. crew that were from the States back. Mm -hmm. So then they started shooting again. Then I was supposed to fly out um, to, to film uh, uh, some of my scenes, mm -hmm. but uh, this was uh, right before Maria. So Maria was oh, the one that yeah, they just, got the double tap. just yeah. destroyed the island. Yeah. So here comes Maria approaching the island, right? And I'm supposed to be on a plane flying out there. So the, the first is AD, he gives me a call and he says, hey, uh, Yuji, just to let you know, um, I don't know if you're apprised of the situation here with the hurricanes, but we have a, a, a hurricane coming. Uh, Maria is coming and it's, a wait, what? Oh, I, I gotta go, and that was it. And that was that was my conversation uh, it, uh, that was left on my voicemail, right? Oh, wow. I'm going, what the hell? So, Maria, apparently, they they thought it was gonna you know be the same, but this thing was gonna be a direct hit, and oh, wow. they had, all had to evac uh, the the island because um, there was a lot of cast and crew still there, so they they mm -hmm. started getting people on the plane. Well, I talked to one of the, the crew members, and they said, yeah, I was on the last plane out, and I kid you not. What um, is this, Vietnam, yeah, Saigon, I, yeah, in 76 uh, yeah, or whatever? Yeah. She, she was basically white-knuckling it because she would fly, they're flying into, the, into the, the hurricane, the wind, and so you see all this debris coming and hitting, you know? She said it was, it was the craziest thing ever because so many people got stranded yeah. at the airport because they couldn't get out. Mm -hmm. So she was lucky enough to be one of the last. Wow. So she said, man, it was crazy. So then I finally get 
a call back from them after Maria had passed. It must have been like three weeks later. I get a call, and they said, okay, we're, we're setting up your, your flight, and you're flying out. And I said, dude, is it okay there? I mean, is there power and stuff? Said, well, you have power in your hotel. And I said, okay. And, and Angie, my wife, is mm -hmm. saying, dude, just don't go. <laughs> Don't go. You, you don't need. You don't need to go. Don't I go, mean, honey. You know? But I said no. I made a commitment to these people, mm -hmm. and I gotta go. So I get on a plane, fly to Puerto Rico. Oh man, you look out the window. This is just total devastation. I wow. mean, poles were down, trees were gone, houses were flattened, and I'm seeing this as I'm approaching. I land, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. I just landed into the road, warrior. Yeah, yeah, really. And so I, I, they, they pick me up at the airport, take me to the hotel, and as I'm driving there, just, just, just destroyed, right? So I get to the hotel. They have generators, so they're, they got power. They have water. They have food. And I said, okay. So I go up to my hotel room, and they have these curtains there. And I go, oh, you know, the, the view, and it's the... Ooh, <laughs> and I had to shut it. I felt so bad, dude. All you see are these, like, uh, you know, yeah, destruction. I understand. Uh, like apartments, in another hotel, just windows blown out. Yeah. Nobody's in there. This and that. So I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't look. Yeah. It broke my heart to yeah. see this. And then, you know, you're thinking, oh my God, you know, how how fortunate that I am. I mean, I have. I have power, I have water, I have food, I mm -hmm. have all this stuff. And these poor people have nothing. nothing. nothing well, yeah. except uh, they have paper towels. Oh, well, did you, did you, God, what are they complaining did about? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Oh, yes. He threw paper towels to the people of Puerto Rico. Wow, that's wonderful. Paper towels. Hey. And so there was this big joke, you know, and. So uh, uh, people, people uh, uh, in Puerto Rico, the locals, they said, how, how do you feel about Trump? He said, oh, no, no, nothing good. Nothing good at all. And is this politics? It's politics. But it's, but it's funny because here's the joke. So, <laughs> so I'm waiting for the punchline. Okay, so <laughs> we're all gathered outside, mm -hmm. and there's this big ladder, and, and uh, the photographer is ready to take a picture, and then... This one local guy goes, oh, wait, wait, I got something. So he, he, he climbs up the ladder, and then he, he gets out paper towels. <laughs> and roll the paper towels, and he throws it out to the ground. And everybody just rolled. It was, it was funny. funny. Sorry, I didn't mean to get political, but it oh, was funny. It was, it, was, it was funny. He actually what threw, paper, us? threw paper towels out to, to these poor people of Puerto Rico. Anyway. Um, now, right before we go, I yes. have one final question. Yes. And fans are going to want to know. Now, because the Karate Kid is now a big thing again on YouTube. It's Cobra Kai, yes. Cobra Kai. Is there something that you're going to be involved with? Or is that top secret? And Well, um, you know, honestly, I haven't heard from the the people because they're bringing back some old people yeah right? yeah um i would think you'd be on the top of the list yeah i don't know if if they're thinking about elizabeth shoe mm -hmm. or you know chosen you know the mm -hmm. character i played yeah but i haven't heard anything yet okay but um if i do i can't even tell you if i do okay but, yeah you're so, like a CIA agent right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I haven't heard anything yet. Okay. But um, you know, hopefully, because yeah. I tell you, the first season of Cobra that's a good show, by the dude, way. Dude, that first season was really good. It's second good season was eh, you know. Haven't seen second yeah, season. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to the third season. I, I'm curious to see um, which way they're going to go, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, we'll see. You know, I I would love to be on that show. It's It'd be pretty cool. I think so yeah. too. Especially bringing it back, you know, my yeah. character yeah. And, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, See how the writers treat it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it's um, it's the guy from uh, what's the the movie uh, Hot Tub Time Machine. Okay. Josh Heal. Mm -hmm. He's the, he's the um, he's the writer, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so. 
But we'll see. Sounds good. Hopefully. Come on. Right in. <laughs> exactly. Right in. Yes, Tell them. We want you want to, to see the guy the from Karate Kid 2. Exactly. Come back. Please. Uh -huh. <laughs> and with that, we're going to call it. We want to thank Yuji Okamoto uh, for coming on to our show. And thanks for hanging out with Yuji G Yuki D and Jinx. And we're going to see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, the Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he was, he was pretty green. <laughs>